Hello, welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're going to talk about the fascinating topic of snake bite. Now, as a general thing, snakes are not aggressive, and most people are bitten either very unlucky or idiots. It's said by experts, and generally agreed, that of the bites, about 10% or 1 in 10 of patients are envenomated. When a patient's bitten um, in the field, a pressure mobilization bandage should be applied. This is a broad elastic bandage going from the site of the bite, proximally as high, far up as limb as you can go. This is to compress the lymphatics, but not cause vascular compromise. Now, experts also say now that to be affected, this should be applied within the first 20 minutes. But when the patient comes to the emergency department to triage, put it on a pressure mobilization bandage if one hasn't be, been done or is inadequate. Also mark where the area of the bite is in case you have to cut a window over the area later. Now, how do you know whether the patient has been envenomated initially? Well, don't discount the history because patients will come in sometimes who've been envenomated with a headache, lightheadedness, nausea, abdominal pain, or even had a collapse. These patients are likely to be envenomated. It's not likely to be an anxiety reaction. In Australia, most patients get bitten by a snake that causes rhabdomyolysis, coagulopathy, or paralysis. Now, some snakes, such as eastern brown snake, cause almost pure um, coagulopathy, whereas others could cause a mixture, such as the tiger snake, that can cause uh, a combination of all three. Now, <clears throat> when you get to examine the patient, you can look for those signs physically. You can look for bleeding of the gums, oozing at the site from coagulopathy, and you can see early signs of paralysis. You can also take blood tests because the uh, coagulopathy occurs very quickly and you can get that blood test back positive very early on. Also, you can take a CK to see if there's rhabdomyolysis. Not much you can find with blood tests in terms of paralysis. One thing I will say is that be careful on what the patients say. Not all brown snakes are brown. And even juvenile brown snakes, well, they appear pretty tigery. So if they're said to be bitten by a black snake or a brown snake, don't actually believe them. So another thing which you hear about and need to know about is the venom detection kit. So this is the VDK. Um, if you cut a window over the area of the bite, you can then get a swab, swab the area and place it in the little yellow diluent bottle. And that goes off to pathology where they can fill the small wells in the venom detection kit and then they'll ring back saying that this particular snake has bitten them like a tiger snake or eastern brown snake. Now it's not perfect. It has false positives and it has false negatives. And let's face it also, just because it comes back as being positive, all that means is that you've managed to swab that there's been um, venom at the site. doesn't mean the patient itself has been venomated. So if you've got it from a history, and you've got some uh, uh, pathology to support you and you've decided the patient's envenomated and the VDK tells you what snake it's likely to be, you can give an antivenom and you can give a monovalent antivenom. So there's that specifically for the snake. This is given intravenously, diluted one in 10 and given over look, about half an hour or so. The guidelines now are that you give about one to two vials of antivenom. Sometimes a patient will come in and they've got obvious signs of envenomation. They've got coagulopathy everywhere or they've got advanced paralysis occurring. In this case, generally it's recommended to give a polyvalent antivenom. This has got a bit of everything in it and it's a much higher protein load. There is a movement saying that in areas where one or two snakes predominant, say, not only say the Southern Highlands in New South Wales, they will tend to have a eastern brown snake and a tiger snake as their predominant species. And if that patient comes in rather than giving polyvalent, you could just give one of brown and one of tiger. And that will see a cross cover for some of the other snakes that may be there. 
This brings to me why it's important to make sure you ring early to Poison Centre 13 11 26 to speak to your friendly toxinologist and they will be fascinated and be able to guide you in all components of this. One thing we haven't discussed is about allergy slash anaphylaxis. Now the chances of getting anaphylaxis or, or severe allergy to one of the antivenoms is very low, very low. It's best to of course have the patient monitored to have um, adrenaline ready, but you know the last thing I want to have is to have intravenous adrenaline when I've got a coagulopathy. To me that sounds like a short direction to an intracerebral hemorrhage, so only be considering giving it if the patient is extremely unwell. Now. One other thing we haven't mentioned is about serum sickness. It's actually quite important. If you're giving, say you decided to give polyvalent, uh, but even if you're giving a monovalent um, antivenom, these patients who will need to go to HTU, when they're discharged, they're giving a course of steroids so they don't get um, serum sickness. Okay, I think we've covered most of the basic areas of it. When do you take the bandage off? I reckon to have a check to poison to the toxinologist about to guide you through that. Um, and remember that if someone brings a snake into your emergency department, even if it's had its head cut off, don't play with it. Well, I reckon that'll do for snake bites in one coffee. Cheers, see you next time.